Hi, I'm Joe James, and in this video, we're going to learn to use the yield keyword to make our own generators in Python. I'll share the code for this Jupyter Notebook on my GitHub site, and I'll post the link down below in the comments. And here at the top, I also posted uh, links to the official documentation on the Python website, as well as another very good tutorial I found that may be useful for you here. So I, I posted a link to that. What is a Python generator? It's it's any function, it's the standard function in Python that includes the yield keyword. So you're going to learn what the yield keyword does. It basically just pauses a function instead of closing it as a return keyword would do. So let's see how that works. <clears throat> so a very simple generator function here would look like this. It's, just, it's a def, my generator we'll call it. We're going to set x equal to 1 while true, so in other words, this loop is going to continue indefinitely, yield x. And then this yield operates just like a return statement. However, what the return statement does is the return statement would close up the call stack for this function. So it wouldn't save all the state of this function in Python. But what with the yield key, keyword here, we're saying, hey, Python, I need you to keep this function open. I want you to keep this state, I want you to save the state of this function and all the variable values and everything in this function so that I can return to it at some point in time. And so when we hit this yield keyword here, yield x, we're going to return the value of x, which is currently 1 the first time through the loop. And then when we come back to this function, we're going to pop right in after this yield line. So we're going to increment x, and then we'll go to the back of the top of the while loop again. While true, okay, yield x again. So we increment x and then yield x. Increment x and then yield x each time through this loop. So each time you call this function, x is saved from the previous time. So that's basically how the generator works. It's just like a function except it never closes, it stays open. And the yield keyword is used to tell Python to keep this function open and save the state and all the variable values. So that is a simple yield function that just basically just generates an incremental value of x counting up from 1. Now there are a number of different ways to use these generators, so let's look at how we can do that. We can use the generator with a for loop. So uh, here's a for loop for i in gene print i. So all we're going to do is just print the value of i. And then I'm going to sleep a half a second and then print another i. As we iterate through this for loop, you'll see we're just going to print a bunch of values of i, so each value that we get from our generator. Here I created a generator object, gene equals my generator, which is the name of our function up here. See, my generator? Gene equals my generator. And if we wanted to choose to start at some value other than 1, I could pass in an argument of 5 or 100 or whatever, but we're going to just start with 1, which is the default. And then this, prints the type of gene. What data type do you think gene is? Well, it's an, a generator class object. A generator class object, you can see what gene is. So we basically just call gene as my generator, right? We set gene equal to my generator, which is the name of this function. And now we have a generator object that we can, we can get the next one of by using a for loop. So let's run this this first and then we'll run this. Boom, see? So it tells us it's a generator object and now it's iterating through the for loop and sleeping a half a second. Every half a second is going up to the function call, grabbing the next integer and returning it and then printing it. And that's going to continue indefinitely. There's basically no limit on that so I'm going to stop that manually. Otherwise it will continue on and on. So what is the advantage of this? Well, it uses less memory. Because we could get a sequence of integers just by using a list, couldn't we? We could use a list to get a sequence of integers. But if you don't want to store all these in memory, right? The list has to be stored in memory. If you want a very large list of integers and you don't want to store them in memory, then that's where the generator comes in handy because it only stores one number at a time so there's a very small call stack that it has to save in memory. And I'll show you in a second how much space that takes up in memory, but it's very small. 
versus if you had a very large list of numbers or integers. So the generator saves a lot of memory space if you need a large sequence of numbers. So let's take a look at another application here for generators, using the generator with an explicit next call. Now, each time in that for loop, what Python is doing behind the scenes is it's doing this. We've got Gene here, which is my generator, and what it's actually doing behind the scenes is each iteration through the for loop, it's doing this. It's calling the underscore underscore next underscore underscore function in Python. And that's getting the next value from that generator. That's what Python is doing behind the scenes. And you can call this explicitly if you want, like this. That will work. And you can see we get a one here. When we created a new generator object called Gene, we get the next one. We'll run this. So we get the next one, one. And then we do for i in range 10, print gene uh, end. So we're going to go back 10 times to our generator object and get the next item. This is the normal way that you would call it. You, can't, you can use this if you want with a double underscore, but typically you would say next gene and you put the name of your generator object in the parentheses of this next call. And that will give you the next item from that generator. So it's a very easy way to grab the next item just using the next function. Now generators from generator expressions is very handy. Uh, that's, we've covered a few different ways of doing it here. One is setting up a function like we did up here, you see. We set up a myGenerator function, and then we used a for loop to iterate that. We also used the explicit next command to, to access the generator. You can also create a generator using what's called a generator expression, which is very similar to a list comprehension. It looks just like a list comprehension, doesn't it? Except that instead of square braces, it uses parentheses. So this is our generator object, Gene. And we put parentheses around this, x for x in range uh, 999999. That'll give us um, basically a generator of up to a million, uh, a million integers. And you could do, you know, if you just wanted evens or something, you could, you could add conditions in here if x mod 2 equals 0 or whatever. Um, or you, could, or you could add uh, x squared for x and range. So if you wanted the squares of each one of those numbers, you could do that or whatever, right? So this works just like a list comprehension. And you can write a little more complicated comprehension in here if you want. This is a simple expression. But that's an easy way in a single line of code to create a generator. And the beauty of it is with a list, Python would actually create a list of a million integers, which would take up a little memory space there. But look at how little space, okay? Here we're going to, uh, I imported the sys library so that we could get the size of gene, which is our generator object. And it doesn't matter whether we put a million here or a hundred million, the size of our generator object is only 120 bytes. So it's quite small. It's really just the state of that variable. It's a call stack. That's how much space it takes up. So the state of that variable that it needs to remember is basically just a pointer to the next integer in this range. And it's only 120 bytes, so it's quite small, even for a very high range of uh, generated integers. Uh, so the type, of course, is generator class, uh, of course, uh, as I showed you before. And then we'll, we'll print the next gene object, and then we'll, we'll skip a couple and then we'll print the following one. So let's see, let's run this, boom. And we get 120 bytes, class generator. We printed the zero, we skipped the one and the two, and then we printed the three, right? So you can do whatever you want. You could assign this to another variable if you wanted to use that, that value inside of a, you know, some kind of a function or whatever. But here we're just burning this value, burning this value, and then printing the, the zero and the three. And lastly, uh, it, it's very useful sometimes to use generators to read a file because you don't need to read the entire file into memory all at one time. Now, some files could be very, very large and they could eat up a lot of memory. For instance, you're reading an entire book 
you know, or some large log file into memory. You, you needn't do the, read the whole file into memory at the same time. You can read in a single line at a time, which saves you a lot of memory space. And generators can be useful for that. And the code is very simple, actually. It's not complicated at all. So here's our generator function, read file function. And I put in uh, bands.txt, which is actually not a large file, but it's a simple little text file that we can use. And for line in open file name, okay, that's our file name, for line in open, yield line. That's all we have to do. We have a for loop that iterates through the lines of this file, and then it yields the line. So each time it reads one line inside the for loop, it yields that line. And next time it's going to return to this function call again, it's going to grab the next line in the for loop. So it's basically just reading in one line at a time and then yielding that line back. So our generator object here is called band. We're going to print the next band. And then I put it in a for loop to print the following six bands. So we can grab the next six bands, print each one of them on a separate line. And let's just run this real quick. You see what you get. You get the next, it prints one band here. And then in the for loop, it prints the next six bands. So that is how you can use the generator to read a file. It's actually not a lot of code, it's not very complicated to write, and it's actually a very good savings in memory. I hope this video was helpful for you. If so, please click the like button and subscribe to my channel. I'm Joe James. Thanks for watching.